which we know, you know is not acceptable. Or, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have sex with my girlfriend every night, sex with my boyfriend every night. And you're a Christian, and you've picked and choose what you want to believe. What you say, without saying it, is, I have a right, he has a wrong. And there's no other way to do it. You know, man, how much would I love to pick and choose? But God's a fair God. He's a just God. He says that's not the way you're supposed to live. So, what if we were to take this whole self-centered attitude we have and put it onto Jesus? What if we were to take this me-centered idea that we've become so accustomed to and, and really bought into, and what if we were to put it on Jesus? How would the Gospels change? How would stories in the Gospel look now? Let's take a view, let's take a look at the parable of the lost son. So you have one son, takes his father's wealth, um, basically says, done with you, he goes out, squanders it, lives this wild life, and realizes, uh-oh, shouldn't have done that. Comes back, what does his father do? He, he says, I forgive you. You know, gives him a ring, he gives him a robe, he gives him sandals, and restores him. You know the other son? What was he saying? Wait a second, I didn't do that. I, I stayed with you this whole time. And, and I lived the life you wanted me to live. And, but yet, he's getting the restoration, he's getting all that stuff, and he gets the fattened calf, and what do I get? You know, and what if Jesus had been as self-centered and as selfish as we are? Perhaps he would have taught on behalf of the other son. You know, what would that say about the nature and character of our God then? You know, he didn't consider himself more, but rather put the glory on the Father instead of himself. And did he know the burden of God's will like we do sometimes? Of course. He said, God, if you can take this cup away from me, please do. If not, it's your will. Since it was his will, he was ripped and torn apart, spit at, laughed at, kicked, and then eventually nailed to a cross. And, and one of the most excruciating, barbaric, and humiliating forms of execution that the world has ever seen. And do we ever read the Gospels? Or, or do we ever watch a movie like The Passion of the Christ and say, man, that's unfair. Again, we go back to it. What if Jesus had lived this me-centered life? What if he had been, you know, if he had been about being right and being fair, Jesus would have gone to the cross and we wouldn't have a Savior. You know, if, if he had been about being fair and, and being right, our sins would still be on us, and the only thing we have to look forward to would be what? Death and hell. We wouldn't have a Savior, guys. And I've really struggled with, with trying to find the next word to say, but uh, the only thing I've come up with is luckily. It's not, that, that doesn't even begin to get to the word. But luckily, he decided it was not about him but it's about God and who prays a God right now who decided against himself. Yeah. You know, um, so he took our sins on his shoulders and everything was wrong with us, and what did he do? Like a sheep being led to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like a lamb before shears, he didn't say a word. You know, and, and so Paul, if we go back into 1 Peter, Paul talks about this, this exact same scripture, and he's saying, you know, Christ did this and set an example for us. You know, when he was... When he was spit at, when he was laughed at, he didn't retaliate. What did he do? He entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. That's my God. A God that's just, and a God that's fair, and a God that tells us we don't have to get back at people. You know, we've all, we've all been around someone who tries to get us down. Work, school, whatever. Causes us pain, gets us down. And what does our nature want to do? We want to get back, don't we? I've wanted to do that. I've wanted to get back. We want to do that. But what does that become? It becomes about us again. It becomes about what we want. Instead of this example, I'm not saying anything. You know, we look so hard at what Christ wants from us. We think it's so difficult. Right here, Matthew 5, Sermon on the Mount. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It's simple. You know, what if we love like that? What if we prayed for our enemies, literally, and didn't pray for their souls, or didn't pray for their, uh, if we're God to judge them, what if we pray for them with as much love as we pray for our family and friends? You know, it's crazy. Doesn't that seem crazy that we should do that? But is there anything logical about what God did for us? Is there absolutely any log anything logical about him 
going to the cross and extending his arms and showing love to the world. Because there's no greater love than a man to die for his friends. Remember? So what if we did this? What if we actually did and do what Jesus says to do? I just remember another example. Um, let's say a friend does something to me, right? I don't like what he does. Uh, it makes me mad. And in fact, it's against the law. Well, I think the best thing for me to do, I'm going to sue him. You know why? Because I want to become better friends with him. I want to love him more. <laughs> Guys, let's be honest. You know, I mean, it's just one example, but who has ever filed a lawsuit to become better friends with the other person? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, you might end up on the right side of it, but you know, you can gain the whole world, but yet you lose your soul. You know, and so it all becomes about love. Do we love that crazy love? Do we love, you know, in, in an illogical way that the world doesn't understand, but just wants to do it too, that wants to be with us? And what if we die to ourselves every day, the same death that Christ died on the cross? What would happen to this world? Oof, I've got chills. I don't know about anybody else, but you know, I've said this a million times, this thing a million times, and it gives me chills to think about it. What would this world be if we could really love like that? You know, and so we look back at everything we've talked about, everything I've thought about, and so how do we sum this up? What is the best way to put this? And, you know, we find that None of this life has ever been, and it's still not, and none of it's ever about fairness. But truly, it is always and always will be about following. Let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you. You know, and we're so selfish. You really are. I'm selfish. I'm so selfish. You just... We don't look to you enough. We look to ourselves. We look to what we want and how we want to do things. And look where it gets us. And God, we just submit ourselves to you right now. We just ask that you just transform our minds. That we remember our baptisms. And that once we did that, once we accepted you, once we were baptized and you and died your death, that our minds were changed. That our hearts were changed. And our lives be changed too so that we can be you. That's why we're here. That's what we want to do, just to be you to this world that's not love and doesn't know real love. God, so just rain on us. Ruin us. Kill our soul. You know, kill our, our souls. Kill, kill everything about us that wants to be about us. God, we just love you. We're dedicated to you. All these things we pray in your Son, Jesus, is beautiful. Amen. Mm -hmm.